Hi everybody, it's meteorologist Joe Chaffee on this Thursday and we're going to start with the tropics because uh, everything seems to be moving along on schedule and we have actually two weather systems that uh, the National Hurricane Center is looking at. The first one, I'm just going to get this one out of the way, is this one that's out in the far eastern Atlantic and this is uh, in an area that rarely sees tropical storm development this time of year. You have to start to getting at the earliest late July and more than likely uh, August uh, into September, which is what we call the Cape Verde season or the Cape Bird season. Um, uh, anyway, the weather systems that move off the African coast stand the best chance of development during that particular time frame. Uh, it's usually in the Northwest Caribbean and in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, and maybe sometimes extending into the Bahamas as we get toward the end of June. You start to see. Uh, th that's the climatologically favored area for tropical storm development. And we've been talking about this area that's going to emerge in the Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico. But other models, I have to say, they've been at this for almost a week and a half, maybe even a little bit longer. Uh, they did a really good job uh, pinpointing this possibility very early on in the game. Uh, a complex area of low pressure expected to form over the Northwest Caribbean and Yucatan Peninsula this week, and conditions appear favorable for gradual development, and I'll show you uh, why that is the case uh, while it moves northwestward into the southern Gulf of Mexico early next week. And the Hurricane Center is rating this a 50% chance of development in the next five days, but nothing is going to happen uh, through certainly in the next 72 hours, so it takes us into Saturday. This would be for at the earliest later Sunday and more than likely uh, going into Monday, depending on where the low uh, set pressure, the actual low center develops, um, if it develops near land, if it does it develop on land, does it develop offshore, does it develop offshore, then move over land over the Yucatan Peninsula. These are all factors that we're going to have to figure out. So uh, I'll start first with the water vapor imagery, and there's that wave in the eastern Atlantic. It's actually a pretty good looking wave for this time of year, uh, moving slowly westward. You can see it there. There's also a lot of dry air to the north, you know, that area of light brown uh, to the north and west and northeast of, of the wave itself. So that might, that's certainly not a, a good uh, a factor to have with respect to um, development. But notice you've got disturbed weather that runs from uh, the area east of the islands all the way westward uh, into the, the northwestern Caribbean and out into the Pacific. This is a large area of tropical moisture that's developing here. And you can see where uh, the color here, the purple, the yellow, and the blue, uh, that is the uh, heavier moisture that is developing uh, in the southwest Caribbean and then pushing northward now into the northwestern Caribbean. So it's right in here. It's kind of a large, like a gyre of, um, that, that's, that's there in the upper, upper and middle parts of the atmosphere. And from this, we're going to get uh, development of some kind of a low uh, in the uh, northwest Caribbean, I believe. And here's the uh, visible satellite picture, and you can see all that disturbed weather. It's a lot of moisture here, but not a whole lot of disturbed weather as you go into the eastern Caribbean and eastern east of the islands. There are clouds, but the main focus is going to be right in this area uh, through uh, the western part of the Caribbean and then eventually probably extending into the southwest and maybe even into the southeastern Gulf of Mexico. So why are conditions favorable? Well, I'm going to show you the GFS. So this is a this is a profile of the winds in the upper atmosphere going <clears throat> from about 5,000 feet all the way up to about uh, 25,000 feet. Uh, and what we're looking at is wind shear or increasing wind uh, speed with height. Because if you have a strong wind shear environment, uh, these tropical systems, which are basically systems that develop from the bottom up, uh, don't like that. The, the strong winds aloft, anytime these thunderstorms that develop inside these sort of tropical systems, if there's a strong wind shear environment, the uh, tops of those thunderstorms are just blown away, so the system can't really organize. Now, in the red area that you see here uh, that's uh, running, I'm going to take this to Sunday morning, okay? Uh, the red area... Uh, that you see, um, and by the way, the low centers themselves, these are surface low, so that's where we're, what we're going to be focusing on, some sort of closed low-level center that develops, but 
when you see the red orange orange area here, this is high wind shear, uh, strong winds aloft, uh, running 45, 50 knots or even higher, and that exists across much of the Gulf of Mexico, across Florida, and then east of the Bahamas down into the Eastern Caribbean. What we're looking at is this area in here. Uh, where you see the lighter blues and the whites. These are uh, indicating winds under 20 knots. Uh, again, we're looking vertically here now at the wind profile of the atmosphere going up. So uh, that is an area of light wind shear. So this low pressure center is forecast to develop inside this area of light wind shear. And there's a bit of an upper air high. If you look at the arrows here of the wind directions, there's northerly winds, uh, then they go easterly, and then they go southwesterly on the other side. There's actually an upper level high sitting over this surface low, uh, and that constitutes the light wind shear environment. So it would appear to me, based on this, that we do have conditions that are favorable for development. Now, where does this uh, take us as far as track is concerned? Well, you know what? I'm going to go a little bit lower in the atmosphere, and uh, we'll go down. Uh, to what we usually look at as the jet stream level and what we're seeing we pointed this out yesterday and we are still seeing this being the case you're, you're going to have an upper whoops let me just you know what, let me see if I can move this map forward a little bit uh, see if we can get some semblance of of where this can, may go now I'm going to move it to uh, Monday uh, this is Monday morning and, and here's what we're seeing. By the way, you can always see the time, the date here. Okay, uh, Monday, June 19th. We're in Greenwich time. These maps are in Greenwich time, so add um, four hours to Eastern time. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, Eastern time would be so if it's 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 um, 12 Z uh, is 8 a.m. Um, Eastern time. So uh, zero Z would be 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. So, um, you know, you're, uh, you sh I should say you should subtract four hours from from there. So this is noon Greenwich time would be eight hours, uh, 8 a.m. Eastern time. It's too early in the day to kind of get into this sort of stuff, I guess. Um, but let's uh, take a look at the upper air because now this is on Monday and here we have an upper high sitting off the east coast. We have a tr bottom of a trough. You can see it right there. Extends down uh, into Alabama and Mississippi. There's a little upper low sitting in the northwestern uh, Gulf of Mexico, and then you have another upper high here to the west of that. So uh, the question is going to be if some sort of tropical system were to form here. Okay, well, where is it going to go? Uh, well, let's follow the winds aloft. So uh, they'll, they'll generally be south to north in the Gulf of Mexico, in this part of the Gulf of Mexico. And again, this is how the GFS sees it. And, you know, the, the winds are going to be northeast aloft along the Texas coast on around that high. So you've got these two highs sandwiched, um, sandwiching this tropical system. The GFS would imply that any tropical system would probably move northwestward or northward, uh, maybe into the north central Gulf of Mexico. Uh, the European, on the other hand, uh, has been uh, kind of consistent in, in, in tracking this thing uh, toward the Texas coast. And it kind of has a, a, a much different view of the upper air than in that area than the uh, GFS has. If you notice, you could still see the bottom of this trough, though it, it does not extend as far south as the GFS has it. It has a stronger ridge uh, off the Atlantic coast. It also seems to have a stronger ridge uh, extending into Texas. And then, I don't know, this is sort of some sort of amorphous little looking, looks like a tooth there, upper low uh, somewhere uh, sitting. Uh, uh, it could be in the Southwest Gulf, it could be over Mexico, who knows with the way that height line is drawn. But this would kind of suggest that maybe the track would be a little bit more northwestward or maybe even west-northwestward, uh, depending on the strength of those two ridges. So th th this is going to be key here in terms of, first of all, something would have to develop first for us to be worried about it. And the second thing is, 
um, what is going to be the state of these two upper highs and the conditions of the upper air in the Gulf of Mexico itself. So for now, um, we're just going to keep this pretty much in, in the speculative mode that we're in. And we're going to uh, wait to see if, if the system does indeed develop, because that at the end of the day is going to be key to all this. Anyhow, if there's no system there, then, you know, this is all uh, sort of meaningless. But I, I think it's 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 pretty safe to say I think something's going to develop in, there. Uh, and uh, we'll uh, wait to see how it all evolves over the weekend. In the meantime, I know everybody's kind of looking at this Father's Day weekend. And I just want to say, based on what I'm looking at, in terms of the weather models, as far as the weather in the east is concerned, uh, there will be showers west and north of the coast uh, beginning on Friday. And some of that will make it to the coast during the day Friday. But as far as the weekend is concerned, I, I tend to think that it, more often than not, it's going to be dry. Uh, there are, uh, probably will be a chance for showers and thunderstorms on Friday. There'll be a chance for showers and thunderstorms, maybe less so on Saturday. Uh, and maybe uh, perhaps an increasing chance of showers and storms late in the day monday into monday night even though you see all this this is measurable rainfall it is um not going to look like that on the radar okay they're going to be you know scattered areas of showers and storms uh and not um you know the sort of the sort of widespread thing so if you've got outdoor plans this weekend i think you're going to be fine and then uh, as far as the next front is concerned you can see it approaching here on monday now, this might produce more widespread activity. And notice, by the way, the GFS right here has its representation of the tropical system, which up until last through last night, it was taking it in the southwestern Gulf and into Mexico. And now it has um, a, a low in the northeastern Gulf of Mexico, which it just kind of meanders around there. This front moves on through uh, into the east uh, early next week. And then you get another w uh, weak system approaching. Uh, for later next week and then yet another front follows after that uh, so you know we're kind of getting now really into the time of year where you know these weather models you know you, you don't have these large systems to look at so you start dealing with all these smaller systems it becomes a little more problematic in terms of the day-to-day -day forecasting all right we'll give a quick look to the west and see what's happening out there because you know apparently it still wants to snow <laughs> But uh, there you have the next system coming into the Pacific Northwest tomorrow uh, and into Saturday, moving up into the northern Rockies. Uh, much of the southwest in California is going to be dry through all of this. Uh, and there will be uh, some hot weather developing over the weekend with the, the, uh, the winds uh, mostly northeast uh, in, in, in the interior areas anyway. But the west looks like it's going into a kind of a summertime look to it with not much happening. Uh, other than the usual scattered areas of showers and storms that you often deal with. Now, this is hilarious because I'm just looking at this as day 16, uh, which is July 1st, and you've got two little pockets of uh, snow and freezing precipitation there up in northern, uh, in, in central Idaho, probably, you know, on some mountaintop. Quick look at the upper air pattern overall. And let's take a look at that. starting my video a little earlier today maybe that's why my brain is not registering the concept of time zones <laughs> sorry about that before just kind of lost it after a while so here's our situation in the east with you know you got this pretty you know active jet stream running from the pacific across the united states and out into the atlantic so it's pretty busy and you know here's where the gfs kind of extends that trough early next week down into the, uh, into northern Alabama and Mississippi before it lifts it out. Uh, so that's why we're kind of, we're, we're going to be, it's going to be tricky trying to figure out if any tropical system, what it does. And, you know, we basically have a strengthening trough in the east uh, through uh, later next week and next weekend and beyond. Now, when we get into the beginning of July, it looks like a big ridge wants to pop up suddenly. Uh, in uh, you can see there's an upper high here in southern in, in southern Missouri that extends up into the western Great Lakes and still some troughing in the east. So, you know, this might uh, indicate maybe some hot weather developing for parts of the Midwest and the Ohio Valley uh, as we get toward the very end of the month at the very beginning of July. Still some troughing out in the western part of the United States and a trough off the east coast. It's all very interesting going forward, and I'm enjoying the fact that this today 
uh, it is really nice out. We've got a wind off the ocean. Temperatures are in the upper 60s to low 70s at the moment. Uh, throughout all of this region, we've got some sun, some patchy clouds, and even some scattered radar echoes popping up here and there. Um, we are at the middle part of the morning here. So, um, you know, these temperatures are going to have a little bit of a difficult time climbing up today because of the fact that we have this onshore wind. All right, so keep it tuned uh, over the next several days as we watch this uh, tropical system uh, out in the uh, Gulf of Mexico and uh, Northwest Caribbean specifically. That's where we expect the low to develop. Again, the Hurricane Center rates as a 50% chance of happening, and you can check out the latest website posts on this. I just did put one up on meteorologistjoechaffee.com. And uh, do also, if you haven't already, go to my Facebook page, Meteorologist Joe Chaffee, and hit the like button. Because I'm always putting stuff up there all day long, even though I, I sometimes only get to update the videos once a day. Um, there, uh, I do do I do put up regular weather posts all day long. Plus, I do live Facebook videos as well, so you can uh, get those there. Uh, New York City weather this weekend. It's Father's Day. You might want to be going. You may be going into town. Uh, in which case, uh, you'd want to pay attention to Angry Ben at nycweathernow.com. If you're headed for the shore, you can go into Long Island. Uh, and uh, I think you can take a shot and head for the beaches uh, because I, I don't think it's going to be that bad. Um, we'll look for the uh, latest Long Island weather on weatherlongisland.com. And thank you for subscribing to my YouTube channel. Uh, if you have it, just hit the little red subscribe button. It's absolutely free. And you can participate in the conversation, which I get involved in on a daily basis. And uh, I... Feel free to leave me your comments, suggestions, ideas. I'm open to anything and everything. Have a great day, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.